this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And today I want to tell you something about why and how as we begin a journey together that I have looked forward to for a long, long time. It's going to be called uh, Second Thoughts. And often in our day, we'll talk about I was having second thoughts when we make a decision and then we're not sure that it was the right one. But I want to talk about it at a much deeper level. We basically live from our minds and our lives are filled with anxiety or fear or joy or anticipation or confidence, depending on what it is that's going on in our minds. And I want to take the thoughts of Jesus, particularly as For me, I've been able to learn about them through our friend Dallas Willard and unpack them so that our minds can begin to be reformed, so that our lives can begin to be transformed. I want to take one thought. Dallas had a gift for often articulating complex thoughts in quite sticky ways each day so that we can live with them and they can become part of the furniture in our minds. Because we live out of our minds. When we are present to any person, but particularly present to God, it mostly happens in our lives. Our minds have a kind of a posture or an orientation or a character to them. And now Jesus invites us to enter into this kind of process. And it's been over 30 years ago now. I would put these tapes into an old Walkman tape recorder, if you remember those of talks that Dallas Willard had given on this idea of the kingdom of God. And one of the primary words, the one I want to talk about in this first session, is Jesus' word, repent. Now often when we hear that word, as is frequently the case, we will put all kinds of baggage into it and we will think, I'm supposed to beat myself up or I'm supposed to try to make myself feel bad or I'm supposed to try to convince myself that I'm a worse person than I actually believe that I really am because God will be pleased with that. And Dallas would say, no, 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 that's not the idea at all. Um, Repenting is actually a word about thinking. Metanoeo, it comes from two different words, meta, after, and then the other word has to do with mind. Have second thoughts. Think it out again. Or as he put it, reconsider your strategy for living in light of a remarkable opportunity. And that is that now, through Jesus, through simple confidence in him, life together with God has become available as a possibility for you right where you are. So you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be worried. You don't have to give in to greed or fear of missing out. Now, Dallas uses a picture from the Divine Conspiracy. I'll try to remember page numbers in this journey. This is on page 30. Uh, A picture of what it is that Jesus is offering. His gospel is not primarily, um, here's how to get into heaven after you die. It's good news after death, but it's good news before death. And it is a new kind of life that's available to you today, right now. This is the foundation of it all. Here's a picture Dallas uses. When he was a child in very rural Missouri, there was no electricity available where he lived. It wasn't until for Dallas, he was 18 years old, um, that the Rural Electrification Administration extended his lines into that area. When those lines came by our farm, he writes, a very different way of living presented itself. Our relationships to fundamental aspects of life, daylight and dark, hot and cold, clean and dirty, work and leisure, preparing and preserving food, could then be vastly changed for the better. But we had to believe in the electricity and its arrangements, understand them, and take practical steps involved in relying on it. You may think the comparison rather crude, and in some respects it is, But it will help us understand Jesus' basic message about the kingdom of the heavens if we pause to reflect on those farmers who, in effect, heard the message, repent, for electricity is at hand. Repent, or turn from their kerosene lamps and lanterns, their ice boxes and cellars, their scrub boards and rug beaters, their woman-powered sewing machines, and they were generally powered by women, and their radios with dry cell batteries. The power that could make their lives far better was right near them, where by making relatively simple arrangements, they could utilize it. Strangely, if you did not accept it, 
They did not enter into the kingdom of electricity. Some just didn't want to change. Others did not think they could afford it. But the power was now available. And similarly, the kingdom of God is now beside us. You can reach it from your heart with your mouth through even a shaking and stumbling confidence and confession that Jesus is the death-conquering master of all. It is so available, this kingdom, that everyone who from the center of his or her being calls upon Jesus as master of the universe and prince of life will be heard and will be delivered into his kingdom. So now, what I want to think about today, invite you to think about today, is reconsider, this is the way Dallas would sometimes translate that word, repent, reconsider your strategy for living. And I might ask myself, you might ask yourself today, what's your default strategy for living? What are you betting on is going to deliver you the life that you have always wanted? All of us have some default mode that will tempt us to go another direction from God. It could be if I just had enough money, or if my health would just be okay, or if my kids would just turn out right, or if my work would just make me be successful, or if I could just have enough safety or enough sense of security, or enough people would know and like me. But very smart people have walked down those roads as far as they can be walked, and the, and the report that comes back is very clear, not it, not it, not it. So instead now, here's the good news, and we'll look at this more. Uh, God is present right where you are, and God is able, and God is good. And so in my mind today, I can turn my mind into the presence and availability with God and make a dependence on God, trust in God for my well-being, being guided by God all through this day. I can make that my strategy for living. I'm going to rethink it all out. I will sign on in his, as his presence. I have to show for you today something that I got yesterday. My friend Chuck is out visiting me, and Chuck is very skillful at living in the kingdom of electricity and mechanical goods. And so we went to a place yesterday for the first time in my life. I won't mention it because I don't do product placement, but it's like a giant depot where you can get things for your home. And I got a toolkit. I've not had a toolkit, this is true, since I was 10 years old and I had a Handy Andy Jr. toolkit. And there's amazing things in here about uh, how you can hang pictures and make things hold together and and tear apart stuff and put stuff together. Socket wrenches, not just wrenches, but socket wrenches. And they're my tools. And yesterday, I put together a grill that was incredibly complicated. It took a couple of other hours, but really, I did very little of this. Mostly, I apprenticed myself to my friend Chuck, who has mastered this craft. And he would say, pick up this and put this into that slot and use this wrench, use this tool, and 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 I did, and, and so we did together what I could not do by myself. And now that's the invitation for you to become an apprentice of Jesus. Now the craft that he has mastered is life. And when I surrender my little kingdom, and we'll talk about that more, my decisions, my agenda, my relationships, my time, my span on this earth, into his, it becomes part of a, a vastly greater project. And then he becomes my friend and, and the master craftsman from whom I apprentice myself and learn about how to do life. So that's the invitation today. Repent. Don't walk around trying to make yourself feel awful. Reconsider your strategy for living. Think again about your thoughts. Have second thoughts. We'll talk about this a lot. Begin to weigh the thoughts as, they're, uh, as they come into awareness on your mind. Is God in this thought? Is this thought leading me towards Him and towards life? Might be painful, might be joyful, but it will lead me towards Him. And, and, and we will be developing a little toolkit for the soul as we walk through this and have these wonderful tools like the possibility of repentance, reconsidering my strategy. What's my plan for this day? To be with him, to learn from him, how to live like him. On second thought, make it a great day. Hi, I'm Tim. Thanks for joining us at Become New. 
We hope that these videos help you to grow spiritually one day at a time. If you'd like to find some more resources, you can go to our website, becomenew.com. There you can sign up for the daily emails that go along with each video. You can also access our full library of videos. I think there's like over 400 videos there on spiritual life and growth. And you can let us know if you're interested in some of the upcoming leadership resources that we are preparing. If you've got a prayer request, we would love to pray for you. Let us know at 855-888-0444. We take those requests really seriously and we pray for them every day. We'll see you next time.